Hi everyone, welcome to another PSDVault.com tutorial. In this video I'll be showing you a couple of tips and tricks that you'll commonly be using in Photoshop. First up I'll show you how to give your text a bit more depth. So we're just going to start with a new 500 by 500 image here. We're going to fill it with a gradient background. So on a new layer we're just going to put in a bit of sample text here. And we're going to make it really large and white so it stands out. But I'm sure you'll agree it looks pretty flat at the moment. So we're just going to double click on the layer there, bring up the blending options. First one is drop shadow. And we set the opacity down to about 40% there. Distance will be 5 pixels and the size will make that about 10 pixels. Next up is the inner shadow. And again we'll put the opacity down a little bit. Again to about 20% this time. And the distance will be 0 pixels. And size, make that about 15. It's a little bit of experimentation at this stage, so whatever looks good, it's entirely up to you. So down here in Babylon and Boss, we'll set the depth to 5%, size and soften 15 pixels as well. And a bit further down, we'll change the highlight opacity to 70% and the shadow opacity to 100%. So as you can see in the background there, behind the um, blending options, the text is starting to stand out a little bit from the background. We'll turn the contour on here as well, 50%. And we'll come down to the gradient overlay and we'll put a bit of a gradient on there. I don't like 100%, so I'll put it mm, somewhere around 30% there. So as you can see, combining a bunch of different blending options here, all in moderation, I'll make the text look quite good, stand out from the background there. So the next trick I want to show you is to make it appear as if there is a light shining on top of this image. All it'll be is just a single brush click with a really large soft brush. So we'll create a new layer, we'll select our brush tool there, and we'll choose one of the really soft brushes. And the colour of this lighting effect will be white. So we can increase the brush size with the square bracket keys on the keyboard there, make it really large. Let's do a single click up the top here somewhere. Now of course if you're not happy with the brightness of that light you could either change the colour of the paintbrush you used or change the layer opacity like this. The next trick I want to show you is how to create a bit of a diffuse shadow beneath those letters. We'll create a new layer and we'll use the paintbrush again. We'll change the colour of the brush to be black because it is a shadow after all. So we'll lower the paintbrush size to be about the size of those letters. Again just a single click over the middle this time. Now obviously I want the shadows to fall behind the letters so I just want to drag down that layer to be behind the text layer, like so. Alright, what I'll do is also add a motion blur to that shadow layer, make it a, a distance of about 30 pixels. And you can use Control F on your keyboard as well to replicate that motion blur a couple of times. So now we want to shape the shadow, so you can use the free transform tool, you find that in the edit menu, or you can just press Control T on your keyboard. So I want to drag it down and position it just behind at the bottom of the letters there. And I'm sure you'll agree with that fuzzy highlight and the equally fuzzy shadow behind the text. It looks quite interesting. So the next trick I want to show you is actually going to be using the cloud and the warp tool to create a quite an interesting effect. So let's create a new document here and we'll fill the background with black. create a new layer there. 
I'm just going to use this lasso tool here with a feather of about 50 pixels and we'll draw a bit of a circle in the middle there. And you can see that the feathering it has smoothed out the circle that I drew. So then we go up to the filter, down to render, and we draw in some clouds. And hey presto, I've got a bunch of clouds there. And what I want to do is warp this. So again, we'll use Control T for the free transform. Right click and choose warp there. And then it's a matter of testing and experimenting here and seeing what looks good. Just drag it around, it warps it like that. And you can start to see that this kind of effect would be good for drawing things like nebulas and possibly also shock waves, things like that. So just keep on dragging those points around, warping it, making it look the way you need it to for your project. Yeah, I'm happy with that. So that's ready for copying and pasting into a new project. Looks good, hey? And that's it for this video, so thanks for watching, and I'll catch you next time.